Hey everybody, have you heard the news? The news? It's I'm Thanksgiving here, tomorrow. And he's giving you the news. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you ready? You ready to go? Thanks for getting no. up early, man. Appreciate it. Oh, I'm on the East Coast. It's easy. All right, here we go. Daily Tech News Show is brought to you by me. You're welcome. But it's also brought to you by over 4,000 other people who also find some value in it every day. If you listen for the next 30 minutes and get even a little bit of value out of it yourself, consider going to patreon.com and searching for Daily Tech News Show and giving some value back. Now roll that beautiful theme music. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, November 26th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, our regular contributor, Mr. Justin Robert Young, co-host of Night Attack Weird Things Podcast and DTNS. How's it going, brother? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm uh, I'm doing well. I'm here with my, my family in, in uh, the sweet sunshine state of Florida for Thanksgiving, but no Thanksgiving could really begin before we get into the Daily Tech News. Yes. In fact, if you're wondering why this is in your feed so early, or if you're watching it at 9 a.m. Pacific time or noon Eastern, uh, and, and wondering why that's happening, well, that's because uh, we're hitting the road out here in the United States. Everybody's got to get a jump on the traffic, which means the traffic will be horrible no matter when you leave. Uh, so we will not have a show tomorrow. Uh, I will probably do a headline show on Friday for international folks, but that's pretty much a holiday for everybody in the United States as well, unless you work in retail. Uh, and then we'll be back to normal schedule on Monday. You ready for some headlines? Let's go. Sources tell Bloomberg that Sony is developing a watch with an e-ink-like screen on the face and on the watch bands. It's one of the products set to come out of Sony's business creation division that was set up by CEO Kaz Hirai this year to encourage innovation. That division is also developing a bunch of other products. Uh, Bloomberg mentions another one called Mesh, which uses small blocks with sensors, LEDs, and buttons to allow you to assemble them with rap for rapid prototyping. And they, they say they're about the size of a, of a small uh, chunk of gum. So I guess like a bubblicious chunk of gum. The watch may come out next year, according to Bloomberg sources. Very interesting idea. And I'm curious to see, A, where the price point is, and B, what the developer's kit looks like. Because to me, this is all a blank canvas, depending on what people want to do with it. Yeah, it, it it's for sure. And... I wondering too if the people who have done a similar watch and kickstarted it, or maybe it was Indiegogo, they crowdfunded it anyway, are going to be filing any kind of patent lawsuits because <laughs> it looks very similar to another watch that's out there. I mean, it would. We'll see where that pebble dropped into the pond. Yeah. Uh, ripples. Uh, CNET reports that the U.S. mission to the European Union has made a statement regarding the possibility that the EU would explore breaking up Google under antitrust regulations. The mission emailed the Wall Street Journal and noted concern with the proposal, saying, quote, it is important that the process of identifying competitive harms and potential remedies be based on objective and impartial findings and not be politicized, end quote. Additionally, Ars Technica reports U.S. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodale wrote to the <laughs> It's good lad. I think it's good lad. Good, well, for this year. Good lad or good latte? It's good latte. <laughs> Uh, wrote to the European uh, members objecting to the players, as did Senator Rob Wyden and Orrin Hatch, and representatives Dave Camp and Sander Levin. And a third letter was signed by 12 members of the U.S. Congress, led by represent Representative Anna Eshu, all of whom have great aides who did a great job <laughs> in getting their names out on this story. And let's just, let's not politicize it. But let's have every politician from the United States send a separate letter about this. Let's, yeah, I, mean, um, it, it, I think I understand what they're saying. This is a very important thing. It has long-lasting ramifications. But to me, it has more ramifications for Europe than it necessarily does for Google. Google can figure out a way to diversify their business. For Europe, it is a bad sign that if you get very, very successful, that the government will look to regulate you. And boy, does the EU not have a way to look away from Google. I don't know how to say it without 
sounded accusatory, but they're really yeah. fascinated with Google. Bloomberg Businessweek reports the, e e the European Union's Article 29 Working Party will publish guidelines this week recommending search engines like Google apply the right to be forgotten request to all versions of search engines available in Europe. That would include the .com domain name. It would pretty much include every domain name since no search engine, including Google, restricts its search engine domains to one country, usually. The group also rebuked Google for notifying news outlets when story links were removed. Uh, they said, you don't need to do that. You're just being bitchy. <laughs> the guidelines aren't legally binding, but national regulators can use them to exert pressure on Google to follow them. The EU and Google. At some point, get a room, you two. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and this one I have a problem with. The EU deciding that there's a right to be forgotten and requiring search engines to remove it, that's fine. Google's response saying, great, well, we're going to tell news sources when we delink their results. I know we don't have to, but we're going to do that uh, to shine a light on this. That's fine, too. But then saying, also, Google and Bing and Yahoo, you all have to remove your right to be forgotten request items from every search engine in the world. Now that starts to affect me directly. Don't do that. That's not okay. And, and, and without, without making this, I don't want to politicize this here, Tom. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm having my aide write a letter right now. Sure. Uh, which is why Justin Young, representative uh, of, uh, of Florida, you know, this is this is a problem. Government, very historically, is not great at being on the cutting edge of understanding uh, where the connection between kitchen table problems and technical solutions are. And this, to me, represents a little bit of a, a, a overstatement on, hey, this is a good thing, and now you need to do this other good thing across this platform. Yeah, I mean, they basically said, wait, you mean people can go to other search engines and still find these links? Well, that's not okay. The right yeah. to be forgotten is the right to be totally forgotten. I, I get the, the logic on that side, but then you're suddenly passing rules for the rest of the world. Mm. That doesn't seem so good. No. Recode reports that Amazon has reduced the price of its Fire Phone to $199 unlocked, a $250 price cut off the already reduced phone. The original unlock price was $649 by comparison. Amazon is also including a year of free Amazon Prime, which normally costs $99 itself. An Amazon Fire Phone on a two-year contract, still $0.99. Cent. It's like your uncle that shows up for Thanksgiving dinner with like, hey, guys, do you, you want to buy my stuff? I got, some extra, <laughs> I got some more stuff. Look, I still got those phones. I make them real cheap. Amazon is is just I, I you you have to tip your hat to how much they throw against the wall to see what sticks. But this Fire Phone has certainly uh, you know hopefully within Amazon is kind of a a wake up call that you know not all of these super low margin items are are going to pay off. If I had to guess, Amazon is undaunted. All of this here is like, yeah, we got to move this inventory. We got to get it out of here. And it's better to have it in people's hands, even if we lose some money on it. But version two will be better because it's exactly what they did with the Kindle. Now, whether it'll work this time or not, I don't know. Well, the Kindle uh, was a success, though. You know? Was it? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely more of a success than this. They didn't people slash love, the price to nothing. You're right. Kindle. You know, they, they readers love their Kindles because it was in Amazon. This one, this one is arguably didn't this. This first one arguably didn't sell in great numbers. It was hugely expensive. It was criticized and it was ugly. And Amazon turned it around and made it an amazing thing as it went. They they didn't start nearly as far behind as they are with the Fire Phone. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've joked that it will eventually just be the Fire Paperweight. Also phone capability. <laughs> TechCrunch reports the Global Web Index now ranks Tumblr as the fastest growing social network. Hey, look at that. Good news from Marissa Meyer. 120% growth in active users over the last six months. Pinterest is second at 111% and Instagram now third at 64%. Facebook is almost flat in active user growth at 2%. Twitter grew 26%. So they're not doing too bad. Uh, the news is better on mobile for faith, Facebook. Uh, growth of mobile app usage there is really good. Snapchat is tops at 56%, followed by Facebook Messenger. Uh, and again, in third place, Instagram. Instagram has sunk to be like the solid third place choice on both these lists. You, know, you just said something that's really, really fascinating to me. And that is Marissa Meyer. 
right? Hold on. Okay, there we go. I thought I was going to sneeze. I was going to sneeze in excitement because <laughs> Marissa Meyer's you, nothing to sneeze at, Justin. You know that I always, I always obsess about narratives, and it's funny because I read that story and I had the same reaction you did, which was, "Hey, good news for Yahoo!" Because for whatever reason, I'm rooting for Yahoo. I have very little connection to it as a product, but I want to think well of it. And it made me happy to see that Tumblr is a success story for them as opposed to an albatross. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, Yahoo has been uh, being raked over the coals recently. So, you know, I think I just like to see any company get good news. Now, the note here with Snapchat, Snapchat continues to explode. At what point do we see the, the Snapchat, do they sell or do they you know, stake themselves out as, as Twitter. I feel like that's going to be a big 2015 story. Oh, they were, they were waiting for the brands to show up and the brands are showing up. People are, yeah. people are follow us on Snapchat. We'll send you messages. Uh, and that's real money. And so now, now they can sell for the price that they want to sell for if they want to sell. Maybe yeah. they don't. Now who would want to buy them? Questions, questions, questions. Mm -hmm. who, who that didn't already buy a messaging app? Exactly. Yeah. Now, if they really wanted to get into some big boffo coin, they get into the stickers market. <laughs> and if you're still wondering whether or not that's not a, a gold mine in and of itself, I'm going to direct you on over to line. Back in April, the Japanese instant messaging app launched the creator's market, where its users could make and sell their own stickers, large and sometimes animated emoji. TechCrunch reports today that line has sold more than, wait for it, 30 million stickers from independent creators during the market's first six months of business. Close to 36 million sticker packs have been bought from the market from a total base of 270,000 creators. That, and that's just the user-created ones. That doesn't count all the stickers that Line makes the themselves and sells for millions and millions is, of dollars. So let's put this in context. Is this the first time that we have seen an explosion like this since, say, iTunes uh, put user-created very easily to buy stuff next to professional content? You're talking about what? The uh, line music industry. store? Yeah. Like when, when yeah. indies could go in there? When, when indies or it became very easy. Yeah. You know, we're about to, not to plug, but we're about to release the third Night Attack uh, studio album, Too Old to Talk, hopefully available to December 9th. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. easy for us to do that and put it right next to the Pat Oswalds and, and, uh, and, and Jim Gaffigan's of the world. This is a whole new medium where a lot of independent artists can apparently make a fair amount of coin being on a tremendously popular distribution system. Yeah, you know, I hadn't thought about it from an artist's point of view because I'm like, well, but it's stickers. You know, people are just having fun. But you're right. If I'm an artist, this is a place to make money selling my art. I mean, it, it, it is art. It, it, you, it, you can laugh at the stickers, but that, that takes talent to make a good sticker in line. It really stickers does. Stickers pay rent, then yeah. stick me up. Interesting. The next web reports Google continues to expand its offerings in Cuba. Adding to the previously launched Chrome browser there, Google is launching Google Play and Google Analytics in Cuba today. Both apps have to be free to avoid violating U.S. restrictions on exports to Cuba. Google chairman Eric Schmidt has written previously that he believes empowering citizens with information tools is the best way to encourage Cubans to modernize. And with his rum and coke, he declared Cuba Libre. <laughs> Well, he, he declared Google Play Libre because <laughs> uh, he didn't want to violate the export ban. <laughs> indeed, indeed. CNET reports Huawei is partnering with uh, South Korean mobile telecommunications companies, uh, SK Telecom, KT, and LGU Plus, to establish 5G networks. Official standards for 5G haven't been set yet, but we're talking speeds around 1,000 times faster than LTE by 2020. Huawei is considered uh, considering building an R and D center in South Korea. I just I just love to hear that five G is now starting to get talked about. Like that's exciting. Uh, absolutely. And the more that Huawei pushes, the more I feel that American based companies will look to uh, build and and compete because Huawei is seems to be the big uh, the big the big villain for uh, you know uh, American telecom does make me wonder 3g was first in europe 4g was first in the u.s 
And in both cases, the telecoms were so busy building out 3G in Europe that they were late to jump on 4G. And, and, it, and so the U.S. took advantage. I'm wondering if Korea gets 5G first. It's way too early to say for sure. Smaller problem to solve, right? You know, yeah. certainly smaller yeah. than both the United States rollout and, and European rollout. So it wouldn't shock me. The Verge reports that NASA astronauts aboard the International Space Station have become the first people to print a 3D object in space. <laughs> hey, the printer, hey. it was like literally in space. The printer was installed aboard the ISS last week by NASA's commander Barry Butch Wilmore and was used to produce a replacement plastic faceplate for the 3D printer itself because if you're an astronaut traveling to Mars, you might need to 3D print another 3D printer someday. The parts printed will be sent back to Earth in 2015 to check differences between manufacturing in space versus Earth. NASA is testing the viability of producing replacement parts in space, because that could save them a lot of money, as well as the effect of zero gravity on 3D printing. Yeah, this is not just bringing a bunch of moldy bread up to space and seeing what happens. You know, this is not a science project in the way that we like to think of just ob observing something in a different uh, atmosphere to see how it's different. A 3D printing solution is a key cog to long-term space travel. So this is really, really rad to see this in practice. Absolutely. Time now for some news from you. These are submitted on our subreddit. Get in there and join them. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. There's tons of great stuff going on in there. All kinds of stories being submitted. And the voting is what makes it helpful because I get to see like, all right, a lot of people are really interested in that particular story. Okay. Uh, one of our constant awesome contributors in there is Abituela Condulce, who I'm trying to get better at pronouncing your name. Passes along a Gizmodo report that Google's new Times Square billboard is very large. The billboard <laughs> promotes the Android operating system, uses 24 million LED megapixels, a cost of 2.5 million over four weeks. It's also interactive. Passersby can climb up on a platform and play games using a 20-foot Android avatar that they create by using Google's Androidify website or the app for the same thing. Now, is, is that 2.5 million just an electricity cost or well, is i that think I, if i'm reading this story right that's what they pay for the space wow uh although i mean i guess i don't know i don't know if i would think that cheaper would make more i don't sense know if the electricity and the leds are included maybe they are yeah macbyte submitted uh an in gadget expose rant on why so many video games arrive quote unquote broken that's their word, not ours. Get your ethics and video game journalism conversations on their comment thread. But they do uh, have they do a game by game breakdown of some of the major titles, including Halo, the Master Chief Collection, and Assassin's Creed Unity. Worth a read. Go ahead and check it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, I brought this up because uh, MacBytes uh, had submitted it and it was voted way up by people, and it's become a a, a very big issue where you know halo master chief came out and it's still broken for multiplayer yeah. assassin's creed had frame rate drops and bugs like crazy uh and and there, there's other examples in the, in this rant as well i and and he asked a really important question here which is hey guys is this okay like i know it's more complicated to do multiplayer and i know you're always going to have some bugs but it, he feels like maybe these game manufacturers are starting to just ship anyway and then we'll fix it later and he's like i don't know if i want to spend my money on stuff like that you want to know what i think has kind of changed on this is we have seen so many indie developers make so many compelling iphone and android games that are granted on a tremendously smaller scale but even the stuff that comes out on Steam that is with, you know, two or three person development studios, when all those exist and you see that they are more stable than AAA titles with exponentially larger budgets and plugged into organizations that have years and decades of experience of developing stuff, it's hard not to now look at them with a more critical eye. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 he goes into that uh, uh on the on this this article about how it used to just you know maybe you had to blow on the cartridge but that's it 
Uh, it's Ben Gilbert who is writing this at Engadget. We had a great conversation about this, by the way. Actually, it was more just listening to Scott throw down some wisdom and knowledge uh, on this on the morning stream. So if you're you're not a subscriber, you might want to check out the morning stream at frogpants.com because uh, Scott went to town on, on why he thinks that, you know, developers get a bad rap. It's not their fault. A lot of times it's the suits. Doesn't mean you shouldn't necessarily have Gilbert's opinion about companies, but but don't target the devs. A lot of times they're just given unreasonable dates and it's like, well, we have to ship. They're making us. So we'll do our best and fix it afterwards. And there's a lot tied to it. You know, if, if all of a sudden you have it coming out and you're going to co-launch it with the brand new Doritos uh, explosive uh, habanero taco chips, then, you know, it's got to come out at a certain time. You're operating in a bigger space. But it really does illustrate larger organizations with greater bureaucracy creates their own unique problems. And we are we are seeing those uh, play out while smaller companies are able to, and, and many times companies quote unquote, because it's one or two people, are able to turn out, you know, simple yet solid and fun game experiences. All right, uh, let's get into our discussion story today. It's something we haven't had in the headlines, but it's been going on uh, in the background there. Sony Pictures Entertainment, which let's get the confusion to the minimum at the beginning. Sony Pictures yeah. Entertainment is not Sony Computers. Uh, it is not the c- people behind the PS4. It is not the people behind the Walkman or Sony Music or any or any of that. Uh, Sony although, Pictures... Although they, they have made uh, great strides, including putting out, uh, putting out commercials to blur that line. Have you seen that commercial? What? the Which one? The Sony commercial where it's like, Right now, uh, somebody is uh, is writing a screenplay. It'll be picked up by Sony Pictures. Right, right, right. Sony, Sony that's that's a really good point because Kaz Harai is really pushing this. We're all one Sony because there's yeah. even some some divisions within. But for the purposes of the story, we're not talking about hey everybody pull together. We're all the same company. We're talking about the computer systems at one location and in one division. Right, yeah. And so everybody's trying to wonder if this attack on Sony Pictures Entertainment is going to affect their PlayStation gaming or their PlayStation account. Probably not. I'm not going to yeah. say it's impossible, but probably not. Uh, anyway, uh, attackers took down Sony Computers systems on Monday. Again, not their website, necess- you know, not, not their forward-facing stuff. They took down the computers at work. So people went into work and found that their computer was showing a, a, a picture of a red skeleton uh, by a group calling themselves Guardians of Peace and using the hashtag GOP. A member of that group calling themselves Lena told The Verge by email, we want equality. Sony doesn't. It's an upward battle. Also, Sony doesn't lock their doors physically, so we work with other staff with similar interests to get in. I'm sorry I can't say more. Safety for our team is important. Uh, they had URLs to data that they had taken and said, we give you till Monday night or we will release this. Uh, a lot of people have gotten their hands on this data now and are going through it. There's debate over how useful it is. Some of it looks like password lists, but, but not the kind of password list that you would normally see stored on a directory. So maybe it was like some person's personal account and they'd stored their passwords in a doc. Uh, other people are saying, no, there's, there's some, you know, there's some valuable stuff. Ver- the Verge seems to think it's just promotional stills and podcasts mostly. Uh, CSO Online Salted Hash says there's some source code files in there. There's some uh, SQL database and Oracle passwords in there. Uh, those could be damaging. So far... We haven't seen any damaging results from this yet, but people on Reddit are pouring through this uh, and and looking at every nook and cranny. So probably would have seen something by now if there was something truly interesting in there, but maybe they haven't gone through all of it and and still trying to figure out if they've actually got the system back online. Last report was four hours ago from Engadget that I saw, uh, and they hadn't. Now, meanwhile, the GOP did issue a warning Uh, This is a quote. We've already warned you. This is just the beginning. We continue till our request be met. We've obtained all your internal data, including your secrets and top secret clip. If you don't obey us, we'll release data shown below to the world. Determine what you will do till November the 24th, 11 p.m. GMT. Yeah. Uh, So that... (laughs) I, I, we actually had Dana Brunetti, who's not a Sony Pictures 
entertainment person. He's a, he's a, an executive producer at Trigger Street, uh, works on House of Cards, and, and is currently uh, producing uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie. He mentioned it in the pre-show. He's like, did you guys hear about that Sony hack? He's like, I've had, tr- I've had trouble getting in touch with people. So it's, this is a real thing where people can't use their email. They can't use the, the phone system at the office. They're having to do some things the old-fashioned way. A couple of Twitter accounts got hacked. Uh, and, and there was some interesting stuff posted on those that seems to have come from GOP uh, accusing Sony's CEO of being a criminal, Michael Linton. Uh, the, not Sony CEO, I'm sorry, Sony Pictures CEO, Sony Pictures yeah. Entertainment CEO, yeah. Michael Linton. Uh, the a weird thing about this is it's not a hack of a database for credit card numbers. It's not a hack of passwords. This is this is personal. They, what, for w- well, whatever's going on, they're like profile. they're trying to affect something, some sort of change on Sony's personnel, including the CEO. Or it's hackers who want a big trophy, because if if you know, sure, for, for whatever would they would want, if it makes a bunch of noise and everybody knows that Guardians of Peace took down Sony Pictures, then. It's covered in the trades. It's covered in the business, uh, you know, outlets, and now they have a, a big, you know, a big, big five-point buck on their wall that gets their name out there. Sure, so, and it could be that. Well, I mean, it can be all these things, yeah. right? It, it can. Uh, there's some conspiracy theorists saying that it's a Sony stunt to to promote a movie because it kind of looks like a movie thing when you look at the image of the red skeleton you're like that looks like something you would put in a hack in a bad hacker movie sure uh but i also don't think sony would take down their own employees emails just as a stunt oh my god how amazing would it be if they got (laughs) an assist letter from disney for infringing on the red skull uh intellectual property (laughs) I think Brian, Brian and Scott were asking about that. They're like, is this like Red Skull like Red Skull? <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, it, this is a really interesting attack, though. And, and, and yeah, it's a hack, but it's more than just a hack. Hacking isn't always bad. This is an attack. This, they're, they're trying to make a demand. It, it is unclear what they want from the things we've seen publicly. They, there's sort of an attitude of, you know what you did, Sony Pictures right, which, Entertainment, which, and you need to fix it. Me suspicious on how motivated this is by a cause. Mm-hmm. Because this is the point of greatest platform for them. When they take down the site and they have the opportunity to put out their unadulterated message out there, you would think that if this was about suing, uh, you know, downloaders for stuff or, uh, you know, having uh, onerous lawsuits out for other, you know, whatever pet cause they have. This is the time to say we are fighting for X, Y, and Z and you need to change A, B, and C. They didn't do that. They said, you, you heard, we heard what you did and we just took you down. Yeah, and it's really hard to do what they did like hack into everybody's desktop like that without some kind of inside help, which makes me think they did have somebody on the inside. That part is probably not a lie. Oh, so, I don't doubt it. I mean, still doesn't say, still doesn't shed light on their purposes though. The U.S. military has you know like you know right. Uh, There's been an Edward Snowden in the world exactly. too. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Bradley Bradley Manning turned over stuff to to WikiLeaks. Like yeah. It, it is it is not uncommon that in large gigantic organizations there are disaffected members of them and. They can cooperate with malicious interests outside the gates. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're not going to solve it today. Uh, but la- you know, BioCow says last report still down too. If people are people are looking around that, Jenny is going to uh, update us if if we hear anything else. Uh, and by the time you listen to this, maybe it'll have changed. But uh, also negative one point for Guardians of Peace to not have the skull say, "Uh, uh, uh, you didn't say the magic word." <laughs> <laughs> They're not Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Guardians of Peace. Take Although, a look at the according, according to Sony, they may still be a bunch of a holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking at the uh, calendar, Xbox Music is ditching free desktop streaming as of December first. So if you use the free version of Xbox Music streaming, you're gonna have to pony up by Monday. Uh, also, Facebook has scheduled a second public Q and A with Mark Zuckerberg because we found out so much in the first one. That one happens on December 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific. If you want to ask Mark Zuckerberg some questions, you might have a shot. Our pick of the day comes from Scott, 
who says, uh, hey, I love the show. I'm a web developer constantly connecting to different servers to update configuration files, read logs, just make sure certain services are running. Also, we have many different versions of our code, production, staging, testing, and keeping track of IP addresses and username and passwords can be tough until I found Shuttle. Maybe Sony should listen to this. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's at fitzrev. It's a GitHub, actually. Uh, I think it's fitztrev dot github dot io slash shuttle we'll have the link in the show notes it's a mac only program but sits in the menu bar and allows you to group servers name them have different parameters when connecting to them and scott says it has made things so much easier also all the code is on github so you can see how it works and contribute to the code if you'd like uh it's not something i've used but that's what these picks are about sometimes they're things i use it can recommend sometimes it's folks in the audience uh and i didn't see any horrible reviews of shuttle out there when i when i did a quick check so you might want to Take a look, see if you agree with Scott. Thanks for the uh, the pick, Scott. Folks, send your picks to us too. You got one, you're like, wait a minute, I know something. I don't care what, it could be about coffee. I have a coffee pick every once in a while. It can be about your favorite gadget, what, whatever. You got a pick, you're like, actually, I think geeks would like this. Send it to us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Uh, just one real quick email for our message of the day. It comes from Cappy. Uh, in Tampa, Florida, where it's very wet and raining. Can you confirm that? Are you close enough? Uh, I'm on the other side of the state, but yeah, okay. if it's Florida, it is likely wet and raining. <laughs> and raining. Uh, Cappy says, want to let you know your discussion about region with Nicole Spagnolo truly made me want more episodes of Chuck, the TV show, because he was the intercept. His mind programmed with all of the secrets of the NSA and CIA. Uh, I imagine that the state actors that developed region in order to be a platform in which to infect particular targets and other governments and industry weren't thinking of Chuck when they did it, but I'm glad you were. Yeah. Uh, well, that was pretty yeah. amusing. Thanks, Cappy. Uh, and thank you, Justin Robert Young. Yeah. Thank you. No, you're right. No, no, no. Thank you. Uh, Justin Robert Young, regular contributor on DTNS. You can follow him on the Twitters at twitter.com slash Justin R. Young. Find him at Night Attack. Find him at Weird Things. Uh, anything going on in particular you should let folks know about? Uh, yeah, this Friday, Black Friday, uh, I will be updating and, and releasing the new 2015 edition of my Christmas short story collection, Go Home, Santa, You're Drunk. Uh, we got all the stories that were there uh, from the original incarnation that I released last year, as well as three new short stories, uh, including It's Not the Holidays, unless there's a Justin Robert Young penned poem about Santa Claus bringing violent and sudden retribution to street pimps. And, <laughs> and like last year's What Did Pimps Get for Christmas, we have the logical uh, continuation of Santa Saga, Mac of the Year, a Christmas poem to beat the band. It's go home, Santa. You're still drunk. You're, yes. Yeah. I mean, like, really, it's it's. Uh, I should I should have renamed it. It's starting to get embarrassing, Santa. You're embarrassing. <laughs> You're just embarrassing yourself and others. Uh, so where can people find that? That'd be gohomesanta.com. But go ahead and pay attention to my Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram, and I will let everybody know that it is available uh, on Black Friday. Also, uh, folks, uh, if you are in the market for a Daily Tech News Show t-shirt or mug, I know some of you were, uh, you can get one in the new DTNS store at uh, dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. And David Mark Michael, uh, who's running that store for us, started a sale starting on midnight Friday morning until midnight Monday night. Use the code DTNSBF2014 and you get 10% off. So check that out, dailytechnewsshow.com. Wait, what's that over code again? Say that over code again slower. DTNSBF2014. So Daily Tech News Show Black Friday 24. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Not best friend. Although it could be that too. <laughs> Uh, hey, and you know what? It's going to be Thanksgiving tomorrow in the United States, and I know not everywhere is <laughs> celebrating it, but we are here. And other <laughs> other countries have have their own Thanksgiving-like ceremonies. Canada has a Thanksgiving, uh, so I want to take this opportunity to say I am really thankful for my bosses. I've had great bosses throughout my career: uh, Jeff Alexander and Kevin Fisher at WGEL, Terry Dugan Nolan at WPGU, Vicky at NPR, and Drew Graham, Monica Schultz, and Jennifer Cook at Half Price Books, Regina Preciado, Greg Brannon, Peter Hammersley at Tech TV, 
Mark Larkin, Patrick Houston, Bonnie Gannon at CNET, Leo Laporte at Twit, and you. You are my favorite boss. Thank you so much for making Daily Tech News Show actually happen. I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. You don't know how thankful I am. Yeah, no, is this, uh, was it like around a year ago that, that the, 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 the dominoes started to fall? That getting close. That glorious, uh, yeah, city, getting close. Uh, the official incept date, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Daily Tech News Show obviously launched on January 2nd. But yeah, I think it was around December 5th or so that well, I I'll tell you what, this had to start is, thinking about stuff. I tell you, this year, and I know I count you among it, was the year that kind of everything changed in terms of how how we looked at at, at podcasting and making money in podcasting and and really making striking out on our own a a sustainable uh, proposition, you know, the likes of which we had never really seen it before. So that's it, it, it's amazing, and it's all because of guys, you know, it's, it's all because of you, you know. Yeah, thank you, folks, uh, and. Uh, and, th and thanks to every one of, of my bosses uh, that have helped me along in my career. And, and you're among them now. Yeah. Uh, don't forget but you can have... You. What's that? But mostly you, the listener. <laughs> don't forget you can have a voice of what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Give us a call, 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. The show's live, usually at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, Monday through Friday at alphageekradio.com. Our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. See you Monday with Rafe Needleman. Boom. Take the lions. Take the lion? Yeah, the lions. They play on Thanksgiving. Take the lions. Oh, oh get the football lion. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you said lion singular, so I didn't get it at first. No, no, no. You know, Always take the lions. You always got to, you know, listen, you come here for the tech news, you stay for the football betting advice. <laughs> exactly. Obviously. Obvi. What do we got for titles? So many. So many titles. Breaking Google. <laughs> yeah. Is that an actual sleeping animal or a stuffed sleeping That's animal? That's an actual sleeping That's animal. That's Jax. Man. That is, a, that is inappropriately cute positioning for that tiny oh, little animal. Yeah. He really likes to sleep on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh wait, titles, titles, titles. Uh, uh, <coughs> the right to be Google. <laughs> that, that I kind of like, like that one. The right to be Google is great. Uh, yeah. Free to be me and Google. It, right to be um, Google works on so many different stories too. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I think that's good. For no, it's <laughs> uh, free to be EU and Google. <laughs> <laughs> Um, free to be EU and dot me. Me and you. No, it's free to be Google and EU. No, I, I'm, I'm losing myself in the bit. Okay, uh, let's see. Are there any other ones? By the powers of Red Skull. <laughs> <laughs> Tinvex on fire today. Um. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I kind of like that one. Right to be Google. Sony haunted by Red Skeleton. <laughs> Red Skeleton. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Brian Ibbett said that on Morning Stream. He's like, wait, Red Skeleton? <laughs> I'm like, I wish it had been Red Skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Man. Uh, I probably can't, but I'll give it a shot. Our Javra wall. That's not right. Our Javra wall. He asked if I could pronounce his Nick or her. Oh. 
This is this is my. I imagine I have the emphasis on the wrong syllable. My walking nightmare is going through a <laughs> a, a five uh, news from you segment where I can pronounce none of the names of contributors who do a lot of hard work for this program every single day, and I just spit on their effort by mispronouncing their. Name. You just follow all over yourself with apologies. Yeah, I just. What's I funny is, Abituela con dulce told me how to pronounce her 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 username back in the TNT days. Yeah. And I thought I was doing it right. And then other people started correcting me recently. And so I think my pronunciation probably drifted. So I haven't heard from her recently, but. What does that mean? Fine. Well, what is it with sugar? It's a, uh, it's a dessert, I think. Or with creamy sugar, dulce. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, actually, I got to, uh, my mom uh, just walked in. You guys want to say hi to my mom? Yes. Yeah. Mom. Mom. Come here. The internet wants to say hi. <laughs> that the is internet. designed to get a mom so far away from an internet. <laughs> Not Justin's mom. This is my mom. Say hi, mom. Hey. Hi, mom. Good to see hey. you again. Hey. Happy Good Thanksgiving. To Thank you. Same to you. How is everyone? We're doing great. This is, this is Tom and Jenny. They do the Daily Tech News Show. I met Tom. Yeah, we met at Dragon Con. Met at Dragon yeah. Con. And Jenny is the producer of Daily Tech News Show. Hi. And so Hi, now, Jenny. now I'm a weekly contributor on Daily Tech News Show. Awesome. See? Yeah, thank yeah. you for making Justin so we can use him on the show. Uh, I'm very proud to uh, have contributed to all of your successes. <laughs> 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 have a great day. Weekend, everyone. Good Thanks, bye. you too. All right, guys. I'll bye. see you. All right, take care, Justin. Bye. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Jax, it's okay. Jax is like, what's with all this? Jax the, woke up the yelling? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Who's yelling? Look, he's, look at a sleepy old man. <laughs> he really is, isn't he? <laughs> and there he goes. With his old man mouth. Yeah. Pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I love Justin's mom. She's awesome. She's awesome. Mom, so yeah, we're awesome. We are going with um, right to be Google. I think so. In case you were wondering. I'm exporting the MP3 right now. Then I have to go put Sawyer's kennel in the car. Yeah. I think everything else is taken. Do they out. travel well? Uh, Sawyer travels okay. He doesn't like it. He just stays down the whole time and is a little like, I eh, can't wait for it to be over. But he doesn't freak out. Django loves it. Django is like, is like being in the car is a treat for her. So. Yeah, Jax is not a car person, mostly because he's seven pounds and tiny. <laughs> As and he bounces therefore, around. Therefore, <laughs> like, might as well be on an ocean liner. <laughs> like, he does not like the car. Oh, poor thing. Maybe that's why Sawyer doesn't like it as much, as he's light, he's lighter than, than Django. Yeah. I mean, I literally always feel like every time I take a turn, Jax can feel, like, gravity kind of lifting up a little bit. Well, the way bit. you just described it, I'm imagining him, like, bouncing off the wall <laughs> when, you, when you take a left turn. Right. <laughs> like in free, like, like he's on the space station and he's just in free fall. Yeah, we never take him anywhere long enough to put him in a kennel, but we do, like, you know, he has a little bed, a little car bed, so he can sleep in the car. That's then, nice. He gets all his excitement when we take him I to I tried the car bed him. thing, but neither one of them would do it. They both were just like, me. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Seb Gunn says, that's why I don't like cars. I bounce around. <laughs> Josh is like, why? Why? I was so comfortable. No, Theater Monkey, they don't have special travel chew toys. I tried that too. I tried putting toys in the car and they just ignore them. Sawyer just stays down, and Django is more fun looking out the window than doing anything else. I yeah. think she imagines that she is flying. Like, I'm going this fast. This is great. That's the <laughs> look I see on her face.
Um, okay. What else needs to be done? Um, I just need to upload and post. And I'm uploading right now, so however long it takes to upload, putting in the you know meta tags and stuff. It's good TV, isn't it? Yeah, it's good TV. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, look! Can you see it? You probably can't quite see it with that angle, but there is a really nice Lord of the Hobbit art book up there. Yeah, I don't. There it is. That's my whole Hobbit shelf. Oh yeah, cool. Wow, you got a big one. Oh yeah, that's the other bookshelf, other than the other three bookshelves that I have, because I read books. <laughs> I like reading books. Reading books is good. Schnago was raised by poodles. Huh. Did not know that. You learn something new about the audience every day. Hey, thanks for all you guys for being in the chat room at this weird time. I know it's early, uh -huh. earlier than usual and, and at different weird times for all of you guys, but it's good to see so many familiar folks in the chat room. I think, uh, I think they're always in the chat room. <laughs> Some of them are. I know that for <laughs> sure. It's a good time in there. Um, so I have to figure out what movie I'm going to go see to see the Star Wars trailer. I think I'm, well, I, I it's a family affair for me, so I'm going to have oh. to defer to whatever the Riveras think. But um, uh, my, my <laughs> choice like would when be... When you said family, what you really meant was wives. No, no. Huh? I meant father-in-law. All right. <laughs> Honestly, whatever he will go see is what we'll end up going to see. Nice. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking Big Hero 6. I don't know if yeah, I mean, that would be the logical choice. Um, it may not be action. He likes action stuff. Well, does the Hunger Games count as action? We already saw it, or Eileen and I did. Yeah. You know, one time we went, uh, Eileen and I, Eileen had free tickets to see The Fault in Our Stars because she had worked on one of the YouTube videos. Uh, and, and her dad didn't want to go see it. So we, they went to see, um, uh, live, die, repeat. What was the name? And see that worked on uh, it. I can't remember of, the actual yeah, edge, edge of tomorrow. tomorrow. They yeah, went to see edge terrible. of tomorrow with Eileen's sister and her husband yeah. while we saw fault in our stars. So maybe it'll be something like that. Cause apparently it's before Every, all the movies at the yeah. theater, right? As well, long as you're saying, in the right like, theater complex. I don't know. There's some weird confusing rules. Like if I were going to a theater just to see that trailer, I'd ask real careful questions. Yeah. Because there was some indication that like Big Hero 6 would get it first if it was in that. Th uh, well, uh, Regal, uh, Regal has said point blank, all of our movies will have it shown before them. But the others yeah. haven't clarified that. So okay. here's my other issue. No one's going to be able to hear the trailer because everybody's just going to be screaming. So I know, true. Maybe, I hate to say this, am I old enough now to just say I think I'm just going to wait for it to be online? Oh, that's terrible. Um, but, like, the problem with the movie going is really, it's 88 seconds. By the time people shut down, it'll be half over. Yeah. Like, they should play it twice. Oh, they should, actually. I don't think anyone would mind either. Whoa. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, yeah. All right. And also, there'll be a like a a blow by blow breakdown of it, even just in print, like thirty seconds after the first showing of the first movie on the East Coast. Um, so, oh no, hey. I'm officially old. Thanks, Sean. Sean just bought a coffee mug. You're awesome. Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> I know, it's been really fun watching people buy stuff. And very gratifying. Okay, I'm out of the post, and we're out of the video. 
Again, reminder, no new episode, no video, no full episode until Monday, probably only a headlines episode on Friday. We'll talk to you later.